I'm Elizabeth Alfano, covering for WGN Radio. It's a star-studded night tonight in Los Angeles with the premiere, finally, of The Game Changers. Here we are at the Arclight Theater in Hollywood, and stars are already abuzz. Everybody can feel the excitement. The last time I interviewed the cast of The Game Changers, it was Sundance 2018. It is now September 2019. I've been waiting since then. So many changes have been made to the film since I started. Tonight, we're getting all of the stars on the red carpet. Stay tuned. You talk about you know how this diet has affected your life personally, the, the feeling, the, how you felt differently after taking this on. I, I tried it here and there throughout the season. I'm always trying to look for uh, ways to be better. You know what I mean? To be stronger or whatnot. I'm in my 15th season and I'm try chasing around 20, 21 year olds. And so that next day, I just went completely plant based. And you felt the competitive advantage right away. So the first couple of days, I was kind of irritable. You know what I mean? Seriously, I was a little irritable. And then, yeah, yeah. And think about it. I'd eaten something with meat in it, with animal product, every day for the past 34 years. Wow. And so, um, I was training, right? And so usually I get up in the bath to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night or in the morning, and I walk, and I'm like a little achy, you know. And a couple of days went by, nothing. Another day went by. I didn't think I was training hard enough. And then it just, I mean, yeah. trust me, when the season starts, I'm going to start like cold tubbing and icing. But I haven't put ice on my knees in the past two and a half. What do your teammates say? You know, I went to dinner with uh, Braun and Russ of Westbrook. We went to Carbone. You ever heard of Carbone? It's in New York. We went to the one in Vegas. And obviously, that's a huge steak restaurant. And they didn't know. They didn't know at the time that I was. And, you know, I'm out with my friends. And... I got like a cauliflower uh, thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, and it's just, um, once you realize how different it makes your body feel, then it makes you want to continue. I almost didn't want to tell nobody. <laughs> you know, I almost want to keep it a secret. Right. You know, but it's, it's, it's been that um, powerful for me. And, you know, I want to spread the knowledge. And the biggest thing is we want to try to continue to get this knowledge to kids. You know what I mean? And the inner cities and all that, like, especially like my family. How did LeBron and Russ react to you going on to this diet when you were at dinner with them? Oh, they gave me hell. They gave me hell. You know? Yeah, but now they're going to watch you play. So I'll tell you one little thing about the movie, because they say this in the movie, and just, okay. just marinate on this. Okay. They always say that, like, what's, what's one of the strongest animals in the wild? A gorilla. Yes. Have you ever seen a gorilla eat meat? I'd love to talk to you about your school. Not everyone realizes that you yourself have a school that is all vegan. It and is. I wondered if you could tell us about that. It, well, it's the first plant-based school in the nation. Thank or you for doing that. the world, because nobody's raising their hand to say that. And we did it. It's an environmental school. It's called Muse School. It's in Calabasas. Um, however, we've just launched Muse Global. So Wonderful. these schools will be rolled out you know, across the world. And they will all have the same five pillars and the same philosophy. They will all be plant-based based and you know there'll be a strong seat to table program and the academics are are built into whatever their passion and interests are uh, but all of the children understand why they're eating plant-based and out of that came OMD which is the name of the book that I wrote which is one meal a day for the planet and so the children know how much water they're saving how much carbon they're saving every single day and if you could tell me why you and Jim decided to be a part of the game changers obviously the plant-based diet speaks to you but also what message behind the film did you feel that you really wanted to get out to the world um, I think the biggest piece about it has to do with the fact that it really speaks to men and it's a huge thing out there because men think they need meat to be manly. And it's exactly the antithesis. They're going to be much more manly if they're not eating meat. Yeah, and I think it's funny because we always think that women are forced a certain body type issue on them. But actually, men are marketed to just as much, if not more, as to what they should be to be manly. And actually, that's what's killing them. So Real men eat meat, right? Not anymore. Not Meal ready anymore. plants. Luis de Hoyos, after doing The Cove, what made you attracted to this film? Well, you know, all the films that we've been doing are about saving the environment, and you know, it's you know, people always say like, okay, you know, species of extinction, what can I do? Well, the biggest cause of 
habitat destruction and species extinction is the raising of meat for human consumption. So we realize that you need to give people something to do if they want to save the planet. And the, the most, you know, uh, Paul Hawkins did a book called Drawdown, and it, it lists a hundred of the off-the-shelf things that we can do to solve climate change. And eight of the top 20 are uh, involving food. And the, the best thing, the, the highest ranked food thing you can do is change your diet to more of a plant-based diet. And it's also the easiest. You don't have to take to the streets with signs and protests, and you don't have to run down to the Amazon. You can actually do it three days, three times a day. Exactly. Yeah, the average, like, if, let's say in this, in this film, if somebody goes plant-based, you know, totally plant-based, they say three and a half tons of carbon dioxide per year, 401,000 gallons of water per year. Um, they save 9,000 square feet of, of land that doesn't have to be turned over to grow food for animals that we're in turn going to eat. Uh, the average person in America eats over 10,000 animals in their lifetime. So if you like animals, you know, without soy sauce and ketchup, you know, you can save 5,000 of them. If you're a 40-year-old person, you can save 5,000 by deciding to go plant fish. Dr. Ornish, we got to talk to you a little bit before, but I wanted to talk to you again. What kind of work are you doing in relation to a plant-based diet and Alzheimer's disease? Well, we're doing the first randomized trial to see whether these same lifestyle changes that can reverse heart disease and diabetes and prostate cancer may also reverse Alzheimer's. Because I really think that all of these different chronic diseases are really... I have a new book I wrote with my wife, Anne, called undo it, which is really putting forth this radical unifying theory that these are really all the same disease masquerading and manifesting in different forms because they all share the same underlying biological mechanisms, things like chronic inflammation, oxidative stress, changes in the microbiome and telomeres and gene expression. And each one of these mechanisms is directly influenced by what we eat, how we respond to stress, how much exercise we get, and how much love and support or to eat well, move more, stress less, and love more. And so <clears throat> we're halfway through this Alzheimer's study, and I'm hoping that we may be able to show that we can stop or reverse the progression of Alzheimer's because there, there is really the same mechanisms that affect Alzheimer's that affect these other conditions. And we have control over it is what you're saying, at least some of it. We hope so. You know, that you know our genes are a predisposition, but our genes are not always our fate. And that we found that we did a study where we found that over 500 genes were changed in only three months, turning on the good genes that keep us healthy, turning off the ones that cause us to get sick. And since there are no good drugs that are highly effective for treating Alzheimer's, if we can show we can reverse it, then we can prevent it. And so, you know, stay tuned. We don't know yet what we'll find, but we're, we're hoping that we'll find something that, that, that'll be exciting for people. What, what do you hope people take away after seeing this movie? Um, I hope people can see that the old Neanderthal way of thinking that you got to just stuff your, your plate with meat uh, is is the only way that you can perform out there. It's not. It's not true. The science is there. It's been there for a long time. Um, I made that change about year 10 in my career. Yeah. And uh, I saw the benefits. Boom. Skyrocket. Clarity of mind. Uh, endurance. Uh, uh, sleeping better. Everything. Being more regular. Yeah. Everything. It was. Uh, and then gave me an extra seven years. Honestly, I credit that. Uh, change, you know, in football, you don't, you know, the average career is three and a half years. Right. Uh, that was at year ten at this point, but it gave me an extra seven years to go out there and play the game I love. Yeah, you know, guys in the NFL must think I have to eat a lot of meat to like mm -hmm. keep this size up. Are you finding there's any more acceptance of maybe this is a different way to go? I, that when I first came into the league back in 1997, yeah. long time ago, uh, that that was the mentality. Um, but I really, I, I was kind of at the front of that, like yeah. really just starting to, to, guys were starting to really concentrate. Okay, what do I, what I put in my body counts, yeah. and and uh, that's going to transfer to me perform my performance on the yeah. field. And so. Uh, I think it's guys are definitely waking up. When I first ca came in, nobody did shakes, nobody did vegetable shakes. I remember I got to the Atlanta Falcons because I'd already did it with the Chiefs. I would eat all these vegetables. I put them in my my blender and blend it yeah. up. And guys would look at me like, well, "What are you doing? That's nasty." And I'm like, by the time I left, they were all putting spinach and carrots and blueberries and seeds and all that stuff. So yeah, it's catching on big time, and it should.